Sexton in 2004 to learn music from him. And uh, I made a few trips, uh, I think 2004, 2005, and would spend a day or two with him. And uh, these were really powerful experiences uh, to study this music with somebody who was so, I mean, so much of a representation of it. So actually much the embodiment of it, the actual thing. Um, so uh, it really grew from there, uh, that interest and that connection and visiting him again in 2012 and coming back to Boston and talking to Jeff about starting a project. And it was, that's it in a nutshell. Um, and I, yeah, I think that uh, Vic, uh, when Vic shared images and sounds that he had collected, uh, photographs of, of Lee and Opal, I was uh, quite seduced by them and compelled by them. And um, over time, we, we found a window of opportunity to make a film. Um, and we recognized that uh, he's the last man uh, standing in terms of uh, the, his, the, the sort of deep history of this music and um, and we felt someone should do something about this man who we feel is not as not as known in the history of, of music from that region as, as some other people <laughs> Making a film is difficult. <laughs> it takes a lot of uh, a lot of commitment, and I think you really need need to have that. Uh, it's if not, there's just no way you can make a film. And this film was produced uh, and directed by us uh, completely without producers, without uh, a production company attached to it, um, without uh, any financial support. Um, completely out of pocket and so we were pretty passionate about this project and we knew that there was the 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 life that Lee and Opal um, were living and the music that was emanating from him was was compelling and needed to be shared with other people and so in spite of all the hardships of having no money having no time having no support um, uh, we we resisted the the many uh, opportunities to quit because we were committed to it from from the beginning. I can say as well. I mean, to understand. I mean, I hope I hope the film communicates something about Lee and Opal. I mean, I could speak for hours about Lee's music, but there's another thing that's happening when you go to visit them. Uh, and I hope that that comes across. There's a, there's a, we, you know, living on the East Coast, living in Boston, uh, there's uh, nothing in your life that, you, it's, you encounter something that's, um, I can only say their generosity on these earlier trips, their generosity and um, really to come back to the music it's really it's it's hard this is these are hard questions because <laughs> there's 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 a there's a there's a long answer to try to find the short answer is difficult um but uh there's a richness of life that's there in the pace of their life and in the 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 length of the span of time that's apparent when you're there uh the depth of the music the the time that they take to do things, all of these things, it's, it's all in very long form. Uh, there is nothing that happens fast there. Uh, and that was, you know, for every reason, on every aspect of life, uh, was very attractive and it was a place that uh, was compelling to be in and to, to work with all of those aspects of life and the music, of course. Um, so, I mean, the, one, the desire to communicate that, it, you know, I, I remember coming back from those earlier visits and, you know, really failing to describe, to, you know, sitting in a bar, you know, talking to my friends and trying to describe what I had 
experience. You know, not like, oh, this you know, guy can really play the banjo. No, it's, there's this whole world that you're, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a very foreign world um, to go to. Um, uh, um, I think another thing that's important is that uh, that region in and of itself um, has been uh, ha has not been uh, treated uh, particularly well uh, in terms of its representation in media and television and um, news and what what Vic discovered when he first went there and what I then later discovered uh, when I came on board uh, the project is is something very different, a very rich culture and a very rich and and beautiful um, way of life that that um, that hasn't really been documented in in a way that I think that that we were trying to do it. That hasn't really been put on screen. Um, people talk about that region and they talk, uh, you know in a negative manner about it and and we and we felt that there's there's some there's some real power and spirit to to these two individuals in this place that that needed to be um, needed to be shared <laughs> well for us i think we if you were if you were to go and visit Leonopol, you have a different understanding of how time works, and and how how days pass and 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 how the quotidian moments. Um, there's a richness to there to to these moments that that we we wanted to to retain in the in the in essence of the film, and so. We made a conscious decision to sh to shoot with a lot of wide shots and to shoot with a lot of um, um, formally kind of rigorous uh, compositions and um, and to let the camera roll for a long time. So we 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 engaged in long takes and sometimes I think the longest take is three or four minutes in the film at this point, but. Um, but the raw footage, it's quite a bit longer. And so that became an important aspect to our aesthetic, aesthetic strategy. Uh, maybe you want to talk about sound. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to say. I mean, I, I, I would think with the... Uh, wow, to, to think... I mean, the... I, my first thought's actually about like for when we were framing shots, that we were really, um, I mean, this is my first film, so Jeff advised me, I think, I'm grateful very well, I think, um, about, fr you were saying frame a shot as if you're shooting on film, and this is a shot that's gonna be in the movie, and you know, of course you can, it's digital, so you can do what you want, but uh, really taking our time to set something up and to leave it there, and the idea of leaving it for another 20 seconds after it feels like it's done. And there were a number of these ideas that, that were really actually communicated. Uh, I was in the, in the car on the way down to, to Kentucky, and literally I'm like, I have gas in the car and I'm leaving soon, and Jeff is <laughs> taking a break um, from teaching and comes out and you give me this pep talk on the way down for the first time in October. Um, and those ideas I carried with me and uh, and I see in the film where the camera very rarely moves and this is um, there's a stillness we were we were trying to communicate a stillness and a the, the, the very slow evolving time that, that you experience when you're there um, and uh, so that's that's really my first thought and to think about sound um, I mean, we were we were really making every effort to use only sync sound and to keep things uh, very direct in that way uh, and to not spice it up with, you know, nothing extreme. There's no, I think there's no added, there's no, I mean, barely a compressor. I mean, it's, it's pretty straight, those sounds. Uh, uh, and in the mixing, that's, that's, there was some, 
great care taken in which microphones to use, but... Um, I think there's just... Uh, for me, there was such a such a ri richness in the in the sonic aspects of the environment we were in, and the music also, of course, that um, we wanted to stay as as sort of close to that as we could, and and um, and so yeah, we could have taken other approaches. We could have spiced it up. We could have um, cut music under image and things mm. like that and we chose to to really leave the film in a more synchronous state so images relate to sound sounds relate to images and you don't hear any music under the image with the exception of the end credits on black mm. and um, uh, we were just talking about audio and the 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 choice of keeping the audio in synchronized with the images and, and not playing with that in the edit um, as an important aesthetic decision. And, um, and Vic, uh, I think, just reminded me that we, there, there's so much, there's, there's aggressive, there's loud sounds and very quiet sounds in the film. And I think that that importance of um, sort of balancing that back and forth and giving the the viewer the experience or the listener the experience of loudness and, and the quietude and how these juxtapositions can can create powerful um, experiences uh, that was something that we thought about because the the in, the environmental nature sounds can oftentimes be loud and aggressive dogs barking chickens etc but it can also be beautiful and subtle and so we we found the, a musicality in the in the nature and the, in the and that just connected to the music quite naturally. Mm -hmm.